Welcome to my review for Sonic Colors on the Wii. Oh, you can kind of tell why Sonic kind of has that flat, featureless face going on, what with the running into the walls thing all the time. At least that's what happens when I play a Sonic, which really isn't all that often. I have a pretty broken up history with Sonic games. I did play the original Sonic and the sequel from the Genesis days, and then I kind of skipped a lot and then played Sonic Unleashed on the PlayStation 2, which was alright. I enjoyed that game. Despite the night stages getting a lot of criticism, they were playable. I mean, you could get through them. They weren't the greatest thing ever created, but they weren't the worst either. The day stages I enjoyed quite a bit. It was something I never really experienced before in a Sonic game myself, having kind of skipped the whole Sonic Adventure Dreamcast days. But I never played any of the other Sonic titles that showed up on the Wii. Let's say uh, Sonic vs. the Dark Knight. Oh wait, that would be Sonic vs. the Black Knight. Sonic vs. the Dark Knight would be a whole lot more enjoyable, I think. So this was the first Sonic game I experienced in a while, and going in, understanding that it was kind of mostly the day stages from Sonic Unleashed, I figured I was going to have a good time with it. And my point of mentioning all this is to say that I don't really have a lot of experience with Sonic games. I kind of come and go with the titles every now and then. At any rate, generally speaking, yeah, this is pretty much Sonic Unleashed day stages only. Which isn't a bad thing. And if you played a Sonic game before, you should pretty much know what to expect. You run fast and then hit things which slow you down and collect rings along the way. The one thing that I thought it was missing compared to something like Sonic Unleashed is that some of the stages are really short, and many of them lack that actual platforming feel to it. I'm not really sure how to explain it. Some of the levels feel more like they should be mini-games in a bigger game, and it doesn't have all the levels that should be making up the bigger game. I think part of the reason for that is the levels seem designed for you to play over and over again. There's lots of different paths you can take in a stage and lots of different areas you can see and you kind of wonder, gee, how would I get to that platform? And they want to encourage you to go back and play it again and again and get that better time and find a way to reach all the new areas. It's a game that really seems to be designed around a speed run. To help you with that, Sonic Colors provides Sonic with special powers in the form of different colored wisps. Wisps are these aliens that Sonic is freeing from the evil Dr. Eggman, or Eggman, or however you say it, uh, because Eggman is trying to exploit the Wisps so that he can use their power, so Sonic must release them so he can exploit them and use their powers to defeat Eggman. Eggman. Whatever. So these powers include the ability to tunnel through the ground, turn into a laser so you can ricochet off of these giant diamonds, float through the air, eat things, which actually is a little reminiscent of the Werehog from Sonic Unleashed, and a few other powers as well. The idea is as you progress through the levels and you unlock these powers, you can go back to previous levels and you'll have new stations to access these powers which will allow you to get to those different areas in the stage. Which really can turn an existing level into a whole new level going through it again. Throughout the six and a half worlds you play, you'll definitely come across boss battles. Unfortunately, you'll come across the same boss battle more than once throughout the areas. Oh, there's little differences in the way they attack, but recycling the bosses doesn't seem to be something that this game seems to shy away from.
Does it make it easier? Well, sometimes, but I find the difficulty level is really out of whack with this game. Like I said, some levels, you wonder, was that actually a level? Because it seemed pretty short, and I finished it in about 40 seconds. And these levels could be followed by ones that just hammer you down, requiring several tries before you're ever going to get through it. But to its credit, the levels do have the vibrancy that you would expect from a Sonic game, and I'll admit there were a couple times where the levels did present that wow factor. Particularly after chaining together a string of high-speed moves. Because when that works, it works really smoothly. And when it doesn't work, which it more often doesn't for me than does, you kind of look like a moron. In addition to the standard worlds and levels you'll play through, they also give you stages that follow the side-scrolling style only and don't shift between the 2D, 2.5D, 3D situation. The level design is a little bit more reminiscent of the early Sonic games, and you can have a multiplayer option with these sections. Of course, it's really only the level design itself that it has to draw you to it, since they seem to strip away the colorful and dynamic backgrounds and visuals. I think it's called something like the Sonic Simulator, and that's how they try and pull it off, because it's not like you're in the real world, compared to when you're on, you know, the dessert planet. So everything's just the same colored blocks. If you need even more action when you're through the game, there's also the special challenge levels you can play to try and meet specific goals from certain levels, which is kind of weird because, like I said when I started this off, every level kind of feels like a challenge level to get through in the quickest time possible. If you like previous, recent Sonic titles that have come out, I'd say there's probably a good chance you'd like this one. From what I can tell, it's pretty much more of the same. Even myself, I can't say I didn't have some fun with this game, but at the same time, it's provided me enough of a Sonic fix. I don't feel the need to go rushing out buying any new titles anytime soon. If you're looking for a game with dialogue and music that's unbelievably cheesy, I think I might have a recommendation for you. Take off at the speed of sound. Bright lights, the colors are Don't people say reach for the stars because the fact that they're far away is implied in the metaphor?